Hello, welcome. I'm at the James A. Garfield National Historic Site here in Mentor, Ohio. My name is Ranger Justin, and today we are going to talk about rules and laws. I think it's something you all have familiarity with. We're going to start talking about rules and laws that you're already familiar with and the people that give you those rules and laws. And then from there, we're going to expand it a little bit to see who gives us the rules and laws when we're not at home and not at school. First of all, how many people here know of a rule or a law that they have right here at school? Go ahead. Um, uh, I see you in the front row in the blue shirt. What is your name? All right, Stephen, can you tell me, Stephen, what an example of a rule is in your school or law? Okay, uh, very good. No talking in the hallway. Very good. And next to Stephen, you, uh, also in the blue shirt, what are you, what's your rule? Okay, no kicking. That's another good rule. And then one more. All right. No swearing, yes, that's another excellent. You're right. Those are all very good rules, not just for school, I would say, but for life in general. So we adults could learn from you. Uh, now, those uh, in our homes we have laws and rules, and uh, we'll get to the who makes those in just a second. But what is an example of a rule or a law that we might have at our home? Uh, okay, now, very good. Make your bed. Uh, clean up yourself, put your clothes away. It will always be our rules in our home, okay? Well, we here at the James A. Garfield National Historic Site in Mentor, Ohio, we talk about the life and career of James Garfield, a man who was president of the United States. But he wasn't just president of the United States. He was also a father. He was a general in the Civil War. He was a legislator or a lawmaker. So he had a very uh, distinguished career. And we're going to see how rules and laws played a part in his life as well. All right. So let's begin with his home life. James Garfield was born in a log cabin. A log cabin. This is sort of like the log cabin that he grew up in, a very small home. His family did not have much money. His father died and he had lived with just his mother and his brothers and sisters. And uh, in his home, he had rules. Now, in your home, you have rules as well, as we recently we just discussed. Uh, let's look at that first paper that you have. It's a red paper. It looks like this. Yours is red. And in our homes and in our families, first of all, on the top line, it says home or family. Write down your address. If you know the name of the road that you live on or at least the town you live in, now my, maybe your road is, I think, a better choice. Let's write down our address on that line so you know what it is. And if you're not sure, your teacher can tell you uh, maybe or just leave that part blank for now. Or if you just know the color of your house, you can go ahead and write that down. I'm going to, while we're talking about it, I made a mistake with my camera here that I have to move myself over just a tiny bit so I keep falling off the camera. That's good. Now, uh, in our homes, usually somebody, an adult, makes the rules. And for some of us, we live with a mom and a dad or just our mom or just our dad or, or maybe we have a blended family where mom or dad was married to somebody who also has children. Uh, or we live with grandma, or maybe grandma lives with us. So in families, everybody's family is different. And uh, if somebody gives an answer that's different than your family, just understand that that's every family it has its own unique uh, situation. And everybody has their own different rule givers. So who makes the laws in our homes? And for all of us, it is, go ahead and write that on the line. What is the name of the person that makes, who's in charge in your house? And there might be more than one. You can write them down. It could be mom. It could be dad. It could be mom and dad. Or even mom, dad, and grandma. Or grandpa, if grandpa lives with you. For some people, an uncle lives in their house or an aunt, and they help to make uh, the rules in your house. They get to tell you what to do. For some of you, you live with a babysitter, or a babysitter comes over sometimes. That person helps to make the rules. 
not only do they make the rules, but don't they also enforce them? If you break the rules, that very same person is the one that punishes you. So when it says enforces the rules, we're going to write down that same person because in our homes, the same person makes the rules, and then if you break them, they're the one that catches you. And then they get to decide if they get to be the judge. In our homes, it's the same person who makes all those decisions. They make the rules. You have to clean your room every Saturday. And if you don't clean your room every Saturday, they say, look, you didn't clean your room. And then third, they get to be the judge and punish you if you didn't cl you know, clean your room. Make the rules, they catch you for not doing it, and then they punish you if you don't. So in our homes, our mom or dad, they make the rules, they enforce the rules, and they judge the rules. So their name's going to appear on all three lines. Now, that's true in our homes. That's not always true in our communities. It's not always the same person, and we'll discuss later why. But in our homes, it's mom or dad or grandma or whoever we live with that's the adult in charge. That person makes all the rules and enforces them and punishes us if we've broken those rules. Isn't that right? James Garfield lived mostly with his mother. His father died when he was just two years old, and she made the rules in that home. And she was the one that enforced the rules. And if James Garfield did something wrong, then he was, he got in trouble. And later as a parent, he and his wife, Mrs. Garfield, Lucretia was her name, they became the parents who made the rules. And if their children broke the rules, it was their job to catch them breaking the rules and their job to punish them or judge the how, what to do for a child that has broken the rules. Let's go to our next paper, and this one would be white. And it would say school at the top, and write down the name of your school. If you know the name of your school, your teacher could help you with that. The name of your school. Now, James Garfield, I don't have a picture here, sadly, but I'll get one. Let's pretend like that's his school. James Garfield went to school. He was very fortunate. He was a very good student. And so from a young age, he was able to go on to school and get a college education and then came back and became in charge of a school, sort of like a principal, like you have a principal at your school. He became a teacher and then later the in charge of the school, the head or the director of the school. So at our school, in your classroom, who makes the rules? Sometimes some classes make their own rules. How many classes did you have? Have you ever been in a class where you had a class meeting and you decided on rules together? A lot of us have, sure. Who makes most of the rules in the class? Usually it is your teacher, right? Yeah, the teacher makes the rules. And what if you get caught talking in the hallway or chewing gum or kicking somebody when you shouldn't be? Who's normally the person who catches you? Again, it is your teacher, so they not only make the rules, but they also enforce them. They are the ones who catch you. Now, if you're at recess, it might be somebody different. There might be a recess monitor, or there might be somebody in the lunchroom that is in charge of enforcing the rules there, making sure that you clean up after yourself or that you're safe on the playground. And in the end, what if there's a rule and you're not sure that it's fair or not? Is there anybody in your building that your parents could call and say, I think that my child wasn't fair, that my child got in trouble and somebody else didn't? Who might that person be? Who might that person be? Is there somebody in your building that maybe uh, could judge to see if the teacher maybe didn't see the situation right or the recess uh, monitor didn't see the situation right. Oh, right, it is our principal. Very good, thank you. Our principal, what's your name? Ah, thank you, LeBron. Excellent answer. Some, your principal can judge, in, in some cases, whether the rule was carried out fairly. Sometimes the, prin uh, sometimes the teacher gets to be the, the final judge and decides what the appropriate punishment is. And sometimes, if that judgment doesn't seem fair, you can even go on to a principal. But for the most part, the principal's job is not to enforce the rules. 
the principal's job is sometimes to judge whether those rules have been uh, carried out fairly. So let's just assume this was Hiram College where James Garfield was the head of the school. As the head of the school, he would have been in charge of deciding what is an appropriate uh, punishment uh, for a student. And it would not necessarily have been his job to go into every classroom and watch students misbehaving or anything like that. Now in your community, and everybody's community is different, let's just suppose that this was your community. I'll just use this picture right here as an example. In your community, um, you can go ahead and find that one. The name of your city, village, or town. In your town, wherever you live, it's a little different for everybody. But we start to not have the same people making the rules and enforcing the rules. Does anybody know in their town? And first of all, write down the name of your town. I'm in Mentor, Ohio right now, so I would be writing, writing down Mentor. And in the city of Mentor, there's a city council. So I'll write down council. The teacher can help you with spellings, council. A lot of cities and villages have councils. If we're in a more uh, rural area, we would have a township, and they usually have trustees. Or if we're in a very rural area, it just may be a county commission. But they make the rules. They make the rules for uh, roads and if people are allowed to play loud music or if you're allowed to keep animals in your yard. Sometimes in big cities, you're not allowed to have a horse in your backyard or big pets like that because they make uh, a lot of noise and mess that other neighbors wouldn't enjoy. So <coughs> Now, in a small town, who enforces the law? Does the neighbor, does the, does the uh, city councilman walk around and catch people doing things wrong? And does the city councilman sit and watch to see if people are driving the right speed? Who is that? What is the name of the person who catches people maybe not following the rules or the laws? Who is that? Very good. That's a police officer. Good. You can go ahead and write down police, P-O-L-I-C-E. And the police work for a mayor, the mayor. He is, the mayor's job is to be in charge of the police. So you write that down. So we see in our homes, it's moms and dads, and grandmas and grandpas, and adults in charge. And at school, it's our teachers and our recess monitors. But when we get into our community, we, have, we actually have people who have separate jobs. These people make the rules. These people over here, like the mayor, enforce the rules. And if you break the rules in your town, then you have to go to a court and see a judge. So it's not the same person. The police officer doesn't make the rules. They only check to see that you're following them. And the judge doesn't sit there in his judge's robes or her judge's robes and watch to see that you're driving. They wait and then they, they come, you come to them and they determine, yes, you did, in fact, break the rules and here's an appropriate uh, punishment or consequence. So we see that the rules are broken up. The responsibilities are divided or separated. James Garfield, he was in the Army, and in the Army there's a separation of powers as well. And not one, one person doesn't get to do everything. It's not a dictatorship. He later, uh, before he was in the Army, he made rules for the state of Ohio. He was what is known as a state senator, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Later he went on to become what is known as a congressman. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Go ahead on the next sheet of paper. It should be blue. Mine is not, but yours will be. And write down the name of your state right here. We are located in the beautiful Ohio. That's what Ohio means, is beautiful river. We are in beautiful Ohio. and uh, But you may be some other state. Write down the name of your state. And now in every state there are some people that make the rules. 
some people that enforce the rules, and the third group of people that judge the rules. And the teacher will help with this as well. For example, in the state of Ohio, a group that makes the laws is known as the General Assembly. They make the laws, and that consists of a House of Representatives and an Ohio State Senate. So it's representatives that make our rules. But they don't go and we'll make sure the people follow them. That's the governor's job. So and who fo enforces the laws? That's the governor. We'll write down governor. James Garfield made laws for the state of Ohio. In 1858, he was elected to the state senate so that he could help make laws for the state of Ohio. And then in the middle of serving as a state senator, he and joined the army to fight in the Civil War. Um, we'll talk more about his career in just a moment. So in Ohio, there's a general assembly, and then there's a governor. And does anyone know the name of who judges the laws in, a, in your state? Most states have something called a state supreme court. And again, your teacher can help with the spelling. Supreme is S-U-P. R-E-M-E, -E, Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court's job is just simply to decide are the laws fair and if somebody has been convicted of a crime, was the law fairly judged? Was it fairly carried out? Or did somebody maybe not get a fair trial because all the people on the jury knew the person being accused and nobody liked that person? Sometimes that happens. So we want to make sure the jury is fair. Now, our last stop here is becoming president. James Garfield was elected president of the United States, and that's a national office. That's not just for your home, not just for your school not just for your town, not just for the state you live in, but for the whole country. And James Garfield was elected for the whole country. There are people who make laws for the whole country. They're known as Congress. Congress. C-O-N-G-R-E-S-S. -S. So check that. C-O-N-G-R-E-S-S. -S. Congress. But they only make the rules. They only make the laws. That's their job. They're called the legislative branch. They make the laws. But they don't make sure that people follow them. That is the president's job. All right, here's the president here. This looks like the former president right here. The former president, Rutherford B. Hayes. So James Garfield, and May, his job was not to make new laws, and our president right now is President Barack Obama. It is not his job to make new laws. It's his job to enforce the laws that already exist. So in our country, one person makes the rules. It's the other person's job to go make sure that they're followed. It's not like at our home or our school where one person does both things. In, in, our, in our country, we separate those powers. And then if you break the rules, Barack Obama doesn't get to judge, hmm, I think you did it. James Garfield didn't get to decide, oh, I think you did it. No, those are decisions left to what is called the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court. Now, I don't have any pictures, but I think I'd like to get some for you. A picture of the Supreme Court, and then you could see. So we have seen here in our presentation that different people at different levels make, uh, make the rules for us. And why is that? Well, we feel that, you know, in our homes and our schools, moms and dads and teachers, they can be counted on to be fair. But sometimes when we get much bigger than that, we worry that if one person has all the power and they decide, you know what, I'm in a bad mood today, and I think all the people that are wearing blue shirts, that's you two in the front row, you people uh, have to go to jail because I, like I don't like blue anymore. 
So we don't want a law, somebody that just has the ability to just uh, throw you in jail for something like that or make you pay fines just because they don't like the color of your shirt. That's not fair. So we have one person make the laws and somebody else enforce them. And the people that make the laws, there is a way to check to make sure they don't make bad laws. We don't let one person make the laws. We make it a group effort. So if only one person's having a cranky day, they can't make bad laws that we all have to live with. We make it a group effort. So there's been a little bit we've talked about today about who makes the laws and the rules in our country. It begins very small in our homes and then in our schools and then in our towns, also for our state and finally for our whole country. Now, in the year ahead, we see that there are lots of people that want to be president of the United States. And while that's always on the news, who wants to be president of the United States, there are so many other people whose job it is to make and enforce and judge the rules as well. It's not just the president's job. If you misbehave at school, it's not President Barack Obama's job to decide what, whether you did it or not and what's appropriate punishment. It's mom and dad's job or your teacher's job. Or in your community, it's the local people, people, your neighbors who will decide. So thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed some of the sites. You've learned a little bit about President James A. Garfield. If you get a chance sometime, we'd love for you to come visit us here at the James A. Garfield National Historic Site in Mentor, Ohio or any national park that may be close to you where you might learn a little bit more about your community or about the natural history around you. We enjoy uh, seeing school children every day here at the uh, James A. Garfield National Historic Site. And maybe we'll see you again uh, here uh, on camera as well. So thank you and have a wonderful day.